In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. So here's a question for you, uh, but please don't answer out loud because it might hurt my feelings, okay? For the past few months, we have been telling the greatest story ever told, which of course is found in the Bible. And as you know, the Bible is one big, long, continuous story, right? From beginning to the end. And my question is this, I wonder if you're beginning to understand and experience the story in a new way. Think about it. Are you beginning to get in touch with this epic adventure that sweeps through the centuries, century after century after century? This fascinating narrative that involves generation after generation of generation of real people who had real lives. Are you beginning to see how these individual stories are caught up in something far larger than themselves? That is, they're caught up into the big story. Are you able to catch a vision of how God is both the Lord of history and intimately involved in the lives of his people? And thanks to Frankie, the past couple of weeks, are you picking up that the Old Testament is packed with hints and clues that point to Jesus? Well, I hope so, because if you can wrap your mind around that, you have a much better grasp of how your life and how our life together fits into God's great story. And so what I want to do today, and maybe for the next couple of weeks, is, is to sort of hit a pause button on telling the big story and drop down a bit into our story, our story together here at Grace. Like I said, we are all part of something big, something that transcends time and location. And so what we're going to be doing here for a while is we're going to examine how all this fits together and how all of us, each one of us, no matter who we are, can play a part in and can contribute to the greatest story ever told. Because yes, we are all part of the story. Folks, this is really good stuff. So let's take a look. Recently I was at a, a, a meeting of some of our leaders and I mentioned a guy named uh, Father Nazir. And Drew Cunningham said, who's that? <laughs> who's Father Nazir? Now if anybody is plugged into the life of this church, it's Drew Cunningham. Drew has served in almost every ministry that we have, uh, including the build out of this space. And, and in fact, um, you see that cross there on the front of our building? Drew uh, was part of the team that created that. In fact, Drew was fairly instrumental of the design of that cross. And so I like to jokingly call it the Cunningham cross. But that's a joke. We all know that it's the cross of Jesus, don't we? We do. But it's kind of fun to remember that Drew was instrumental in the design of it. Well, my point is this. Drew is pretty knowledgeable about all things grace, but he doesn't know who Father Nazir is. Do you? Probably not. 
Well, that was sort of an aha moment for me. Uh, because Father Nazir is just one part of our outreach into the world. He is one element of our kingdom of God ministry outside these walls. You see, we are a small church. But we are a small church with a big impact. An impact that touches all of us, but also people in the city of Katy and beyond, in faraway places like Africa and the Middle East. Did you know that? I'm guessing if Drew Cunningham didn't know all of that, well, maybe, maybe you don't either. And that's on me. That's my bad. I have not done a great job of filling everybody in on all the cool stuff, all the cool kingdom of God stuff that we do, like Father Nazir. Now, before I tell you about Father Nazir and other stuff like that, maybe I should just go ahead and fill in some blanks that maybe some of you have um, about our ministry here is grace, at Grace. Like I say, we're a small church, but we have a big impact. We do a lot of things that, well, frankly, other churches our size just don't do. One of those things relates directly to our reading today from Deuteronomy. Remember this? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the way. Whoop, we missed, uh, uh, I guess I didn't send. Well, it goes on. It says, walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Well, these are the words of Moses. Um, and he, at this point, he was talking to the assembled people of Israel after they had spent 40 years wandering around the wilderness. At long last, they were going to be going into the land that God had promised to Abraham hundreds of years earlier. Maybe you remember this. We, we've looked at it before. God told Abraham, he said, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great. And you and in, uh, in you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Well, at long last, God's promise to Abraham was starting to be fulfilled. And as part of that process, Moses told the people, from now on, you parents should teach your kids about God all the time, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Well, that instruction applies to us today every much as, as much as it did to the people then. And you all know what a big responsibility that is. And so because it's such a big responsibility, we here at Grace invest a lot of time and resources coming alongside parents to help teach them, teach their children about God. Now one of the resources that I'm talking about is Karen Henson. Karen does a lot of ministry in this church, but her primary role is overseeing the ministry to children from birth, from birth to, to fifth grade. Um, that's where it all the magic takes place. Now, what I'm about to tell you has to be our secret. Okay? All right, please. Because if Karen knew what I'm about to say, she would kill me. And I don't want that. So please, <laughs> thank you. Please, do not spill the beans. 
Did you know that Karen is one of the best children's ministers in the country? It's true. And it's not just me saying that. Several years ago, a nationally recognized church consultant said that Karen was the best children's minister in the Episcopal Church. Now, we're not Episcopalians anymore, but Karen still has that special gift for kids. And by the way, she hasn't paid for any of that. Church can't afford it. But she does it almost full time because she believes in it. She knows it's that important. I promise you, no church our size or very few churches any size have a Karen Henson teaching their kids about Jesus. She makes it fun. The kids love it. And she prepares them for the next thing that comes along, and that's youth group. And by the way, let me just remind you that everything I just said is our secret, okay? Now, I told you earlier that we are a small church with a big impact. And we see that in our children's ministry, of course, but also with our youth. And the reason our impact is so big with our youth can be summarized in two words. Henry Covert. Now, Henry does a lot of things around this church. We all do. It's part of life in a church plant. But Henry is primarily a youth minister, a paid, full-time youth minister. And that is a big, 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 big deal. Scour the universe of churches our size with our budget, and you will find few, if any, whose budget includes a full-time youth minister. But remember what Deuteronomy says. Deuteronomy says, Deuteronomy 6, says parents are to devote themselves day and night to raising kids to know, love, and worship God, right? And the older kids get, the harder that becomes. Well, we know that. And so we gladly devote financial resources to this vital ministry in ways that other churches do not. Truth be known, in most churches our size, um, what you will get, if there's a youth ministry at all, is, is volunteers doing it, either parents or, or maybe some young adults. And oftentimes, what that results in is games. Just games. I was talking, I kid you not, I was talking recently to a parent, told me that they were at a non denominational church, bigger than our church, and all they did in their youth group, the kids just played games. That was it. Well, now, our, our kids do play games, don't, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot more substance uh, than that. Um, one reason for all this substance that I will speak to in a second is, did you know that Henry has a degree in biblical studies? Yeah, biblical studies. And he uses it well. In fact, Henry's passion is helping youth learn the Bible. He does that with the youth group as a whole, and he also does it on smaller, more intimate ways, like two or three students at a time. And this is the key thing that sets Henry apart from other youth ministers. Many youth ministers are just young people who, who enjoyed youth group when they were there, and who haven't yet quite figured out what they want to do with the rest of their life. So they do youth ministry. Other times, um, youth ministers are brand new clergy, fresh out of seminary, and 
the director says, okay, now you are going to do youth ministry. Yes, sir. And in both of these cases, what often happens is that these people do youth work for a while, but then move on to something else. But not Henry. For Henry, this is a calling from Almighty God, not, uh, not a springboard to something bigger and better. I promise you, no church our size or even larger has a Henry covert, which means, which means no church our size has such a broad, deep ministry to youth retreats and service projects and Bible teaching and fun. That's the kind of thing you can do if you have a full-time paid youth minister who has been called by God. And so with this dynamic duo of Karen Henson and Henry Covert, from the time a child is put into our nursery until the time they go off to college or the military or wherever they might go. That child is immersed in what it means to be a Christian. And God knows the way the world is today, our kids need all the preparation that they can get. And I honestly believe that no church our size can compare with our ministry to children and youth. And whether you have kids or not, you need to know that. And I hope that we can all rejoice in that. Oh my. It's 11.06. Where'd the time go? And I still haven't told you about Father Nazir and lots of other things that make us a small church with a big impact. So I guess I'm just going to keep on talking. I could do that, I guess, to fill in the blanks Um, and maybe make you feel better about being part of this community. Or I could just stop now and wait until next week to keep telling our story, which is part of God's story, which is part of the greatest story ever told. Did we miss this? Yeah, there we go. Which is part of the greatest story ever told. See, there's so much more to say about this small church with such a big impact. So we'll just have to wait until next week. And this story will be, t- will be continued then. Amen. <laughs>